newly appointed Arkansas State Wakefield Prison Warden Henry Brubaker poses as a prisoner and arrives at the penitentiary with other incoming convicts by bus. Brubaker is processed along with the rest of the new inmates. The convicts find there are not enough beds to go around. The food is barely eatable, the showers do not work, rapes in the barracks are an everyday occurrence, and inmates are whipped for no reason. Later, inmate Larry Lee Bullen is told he has a phone call, but he is taken away and beaten. On sanitation detail, the hurt Bullen and Brew Baker clean a false smelling stable outside death row until another inmate named Walter takes Bullen hostage and threatens to kill him unless he speaks to the warden. Brew Baker comes to agitate Walter and reveals that he is the new warden at first. Walter doesn't believe him. Then he lists his demands, including yellow painted walls, a picture window, a shag rug, some liquor, and a television like the one for the trustees, the corrupt convict gods that rule the prison. When Walter shows Brubaker where to put the window, Brubaker locks him back in his cell. Trustee Dicky Coombs escorts Brubaker to Warden Renfro's office where Brubaker informs the startled Renfro that he is out of job. As Brubaker addresses the prison, conveying the new rules, the governor's assistant, Lillian Gray, the prison board chairman, John D, and a police officer arrive to swear him in. Ditch tells Brubaker that he wants to be kept informed about the prison at all times, while Lillian warns the new warden to proceed with caution. Sometime later, Brubaker watches that row prisoner adjust to the sunlight when they are let out of their cells and gives an order for the men to receive fresh air once a day. Not long after, Brubaker learns that the roof of a barrack has caved in from the rain and rescues the wounded man, but he has trouble getting ambulance to come to the prison. At the infirmary, he discovers that the doctor charges inmates for medical service. Although the doctor insists that it has been done for years, Brubaker immediately fires him. In the kitchens, Brubaker tells a trustee in charge that 300 cases of chili were delivered to the prison to feed 50 trustees. He calculates that the shipment averages about 20 cans a day for each trustee, although other inmates don't have enough to eat. Meanwhile, when lumberyard owner C.P. Woody Woodward visits Brew Baker, the warden asks him to rebuild the barracks roof his company once built at no cost, but Woody refuses. Brew Baker replies that the prison will no longer supply free labor to Woody's company. As Woody leaves, he warns Brew Baker that he will pay a price for his unwillingness to cooperate with the surrounding community. Later, Brew Baker reports to Lillian that prison labor is responsible for construction projects in town, and food meant for the inmates has been given to the police department. Soon, the mills improve. Brubaker discovers a cabin inhabited by Huey Rauch, a trustee, and his waitress girlfriend on the prison grounds. Surrounded by storage sheds stocked with the food stolen from the prison kitchens, after firing Buru Crow Willets for allowing the theft, Drew Baker sets up an inmate council headed by three trustees, Dicky, Eddie Caldwell, and Floyd Birdwell, to handle the purchase orders. When Drew Baker meets Lillian for drinks and reminds her that the prison needs a real doctor, she asks him to attend a prison board meeting to hear a guest warden speak about prison reform. Meanwhile, the trustees become angrier as Brubaker removes their perks. During an inmate council meeting, an inmate named Abraham interrupts the meeting to tell Brubaker that he knows where murdered inmates are buried, but later, the trustees Caldwell and Birdwell torture Abraham. At the board meeting, it becomes clear to Brubaker that everyone is making money from the prison and the board members are not interested in bettering the lives of murderers and rapists. 
as Blue Baker walks out of the meeting. Lillian threatens that he will be out of job if he does not play politics with the board. In the morning, Brubaker sees Abraham's dead body hanging from a flagpole, and Dicky warns him that his reforms are resulting in more killings. Although Abraham never had a chance to reveal where to find the graves, Brubaker orders inmates to dig for bodies while the trustees watch. Later, Brubaker meets with Lillian and prison board member Senator Hyde, who offers to fix the prison boiler and build new barracks if Brubaker stops looking for bodies. When Brubaker reflects that he is being asked to cover up multiple murders, Hyde warns that Brubaker could end up in prison for grave robbing. Lillian advises Brubaker to concentrate on the inmates that are alive. But the warden insists that justice will not be served unless the bodies are found. After much digging, coffins are unearthed. Soon, Roach loses his influence over the other trustees and leaves. When Brubaker learns that Roach killed Abraham, he forms a posse and searches for him in town. Roach shoots Bullen dead, and Brubaker returns fire, wounding Roach. At a prison board hearing, outside doctors claim that the remains found on the Wakefield prison grounds make it hard to determine the exact causes of the death. When Brubaker is asked his opinion, he tells the board that the state would save money if it shot convicts after their trials instead of incarcerating them at Wakefield. Lillian follows Brubaker out of the door and asks him to compromise, but he argues that the prison board's position condones murder, and he cannot go along with it. Lillian claims that she is on Brubaker's side, but he disagrees. When the new warden, Rory Polk, arrives to replace Brubaker and addresses the prison, the kid tells the former warden that he was right about prison reform. As Brubaker leaves Wakefield Prison, Dick K begins clapping which signals to the other inmates to drop formation and clap for Brubaker in a show of respect. Brubaker is considered one of the films that criticize the American criminal justice system and highlights the need for prison reform. The film is also known for Robert Radford's strong performance and authenticity in depicting the dark conditions within the prison system. Overall, Brubaker is a powerful and engaging film with a rich narrative and captivating acting and serves as a reminder of the importance of reforming the criminal justice and prison systems.